Hi. Hi. Welcome to Kelpie. Um, if this is your first video, hi, my name is Kim. Kelpie is a nutritional company, is where it's for targeted towards um um animals. I just want to provide um people with the information for like um just nutrition information for their pets. I try to target all types of pets, um, dogs, cats. Today's video will be about ferrets. I just want to just provide this information and like recipes and just cute things that you could cook for your animals and just like really learn more about um, how to really like provide for them. Um, if this is not your first video, uh, hi, welcome back. I really appreciate the love and support. Um, again, as always, I am not a certified animal nutritionist just yet. I'm working towards becoming one, but I'm not. I do not have that qualification yet. So. All of my videos, if you have any concerns, any questions at all, please, please check with your vet. Make sure it's healthy for you and your pet. Um, and just, just, just please also, if you want to, just do your research. I just want to just be a research caveat. Um, anyway, so, as I said earlier, today's video is about ferrets. What we're going to be cooking today is we're going to be making a bone broth. And we're going to be making it out of chicken bones as opposed to other types of animal bones. Because you can make bone broth out of everything. Um, I want to do poultry specifically because um, a lot of adult ferrets, they have issues with their spleens where they have enlarged spleens and it ends up increasing their red blood cell counts. So for that reason, I want to steer away from like the red meats, like the beef and stuff like that because I don't want to have any, I don't want to aggravate that issue with the increased um, RBCs. Um, also, a lot of the um, commercial like ferret food diets on the market right now that like the main ingredient is chicken and so as like a lot of ferret owners know it is really hard to introduce new types of food to ferrets so i want to stick with chicken because it'd be um a food that they would recognize and they'd be able to eat it easier and also because they're used to eating chicken it'd be easier on their system i have two ferrets um their names are puppet and frenzy i got um i rescued them from um, a research lab um, so they really don't like being handled all that often, um, but they're like, as you can see, they're super energetic, they're super cute, they're healthy, um, and so I really just wanted to just like have a spotlight on them today and just give the dogs, get the dogs out the way for a second. Um, this recipe, although it is intended for the ferrets and like just, it's safe for obligate carnivores like cats too, um, I give this to my dogs as well because like it's it's meat it's it's meat it's soup meat people can eat this if they want to it's really healthy it has a lot of antioxidants and like it um, provides back the protein and the fat that's usually lost during like the processing of commercial foods um, so it's just it's healthy it's healthy so let's get on let's get on to the video let's get on to it also I don't know if I explained this this uh, band aid here I was trying to pop a pimple it wasn't really successful it's like bleeding and scarring I didn't want to have that gore on the internet so it's just I, this is the smallest band-aid that i can find unfortunately so if you don't want to see this luckily my face is going to get off the screen soon so you won't have to see it um one more thing actually a few more things i want to mention before we just get right into the actual like recipe making like the actual like cooking meat of the video um so with ferrets in particular it is really really important that you introduce them to different textures of food when they're still young because it's really really hard to get them to transition to over to different types of food when they're older um and that's important because like a lot of ferrets have like teeth and gum issues once they get reach their senior age and if all they've been eating so far is like the hard kibble it'll be difficult for them to eat like the medicine or like without like pasty food even like raw food or like some treats or something like that um, because they're so used and accustomed to the dry, crunchy kibble. Um, and because my ferrets, I got them like when they had just turned two, like just a couple of months ago, um, and they've grown up eating only the hard kibble stuff, I it's like really important now that I try to like transition them over as I like build their trust. I need to like make sure I'm also like getting them as healthy as possible. So this bone broth too would like help me transition over into different varieties of food because like I pour it into their food it gets it soft it gets them used to like the different um different types of like textures and I'm not changing their main like food source so that it still smells the same it still like looks the same pretty much it's just a little bit more moist and I can keep increasing like the amount of broth I put into it over time until it becomes like a paste and I can switch them over to different things and it's just it's, it's helpful um also um, I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier too, but just to like for more clarification, and a lot of commercial, in all commercial kibbles, in order to make the binding for that um, 
the kibble, like the hard crunchy exterior, you need to add a vegetable um, protein that can be either like grain. Um, if you're not a, if you don't like grains, that can be like uh, chickpea. That can be uh, chia seeds. There be like different types of things, but it's it needs a binder like that that obligate carnivores really can't use. So the bone broth too, it's this pure protein, it's, it's pure fat, it's pure moisture, which is really, really good for their bodies because their bodies know what to do with those types of ingredients. And not only like does their body recognize it because like you're losing a lot of the protein too when you're making commercial foods, it, it introduces it back into the food for them. So this is just healthy. It's, it's really good and it's really healthy and I think you should do it. Thank you for, for watching this video and I hope you do. Okay, now I'll to the recipe part of the video. Okay. So this broth is really simple to make. I just cooked one chicken breast, two eggs, and two thighs on low heat for about like 14 hours. And then I used the meat and the eggs as toppers for the dogs. And then it just continued cooking the leftover bones and tissue for about 12 more hours, which was also on low heat. Also, because the cooking itself is mostly hands-off, majority of the video is just me checking to see if the bones are cooked enough. Okay, back to the recipe. It is the next morning. It's 7.55 a.m. My roommate had turned off the, um, the stove last night, so it wasn't cooking um, last night. I woke up around like 5.50 this morning, and I saw that it was off, so I turned it back on. So it's still been on low for the past like two hours. Um, so I guess in total it's been cooking for maybe like eight hours. Um, and so I had already lifted this off and just like went through it just to see and it is the the meat is cooked the eggs are still raw I just did the spin test and it was still really wobbly um, so at this point I started to break some up um, the water's not hot it's just like warm the bone is still like it's not nearly soft enough so I want to keep it on low um, but yeah this is a piece of the breast that was still broken up I want to take this out now and feed it to FIFA Hey guys, um, I know I just said that the meat is done, but I mean obviously there's still blood on there. Um, I'm comfortable giving my dog this despite the blood because her body is used to raw meat. I also thoroughly washed my hands before and after handling it and I thoroughly wash her bowl after each meal. If any of your meat eating pets aren't used to raw meat, I'd recommend cooking this further. Um, also I'd highly, highly, highly advise you guys to wash your hands before and after handling uncooked meat just because of the bacteria. I'm gonna put it in her breakfast. Um, but this is the current what it currently looks like and I want this to be like super super loose I want to be able to just like let it melt and I want this bone to be soft as hell So I'm gonna have a cooking on for I don't know how much longer like I don't know a long time It's still not done yet. Um, I didn't put any seasoning into it I don't know if I'm gonna say that in, in, in the introduction or not. Excuse me um, I probably will so you will probably will either have heard already about the seasonings or will hear about the seasonings But yeah, I'm gonna see this on the dog. I know you want some? Okay. It is 5.22. I don't remember when I recorded last. It was sometime in the morning. I think it was like 9 o'clock in the morning. But it's 5.22. This is what it looks like. Um, so the chicken looks like it's cooked all the way through. Um, the water still isn't that hot. Hard. Um, oh, look at that. That looks so gnarly. What the hell? That looks so cool. Okay, so I'm going to take out the meat now. Um, cause like this has been sitting in here for a while and I don't want the meat to go bad. So I'm going to take it out and I'm just going to use this to just like shred up and put in the, um, the food for the animals. And then, um, there's a few bones from the thigh and the chicken bone, the chicken breast, excuse me. And so I'm going to add some apple cider vinegar to that and then I'm going to boil that. And then once it's boiled, I'm going to cook it on low for a little bit more. I didn't use any seasoning. I was going to put in rosemary. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, this is the next day. This is editing Kim. I'm editing the video right now. And I would just want to explain the rosemary and oregano part a little bit more. So I chose those two herbs specifically because like with the rosemary, I was looking at my ingredients list like in my favorite food and I saw that rosemary extract was one of the ingredients used. So I knew that it was safe prepared to have rosemary. So I was just going to take a couple leaves, um, boil it in the water, just infuse the water and then take the leaves out. And then in terms with the oregano, I actually, I was looking up what um, herbs are safe for chicken. And so I was like, okay, if I get like good quality food that chickens eat and I can infuse the water with those things, then it would be safe for the ferrets because like that's how it works in nature. Like the obligate carnivores, they get like their nu nutrients from like the diet of the animals that they eat. So I thought that was kind of like... Well, what can they eat? So how I chose the oregano was looking at the chicken diets. And so that's why I was going to choose like those two things specifically. Um, but 
I ended up not doing that, which is fine, because like it was just gonna add a little bit more nutrients and vitamins. But I mean, this isn't this. It's fine. Um, they're still getting chicken. They're still getting nice meat, nice protein. So that's the explanation. Okay, back to the video. Goodbye. But yeah, so I'm going to take this out and then I'm gonna pour some apple cider vinegar in, and then I will record that process. So I'm only gonna put in a tablespoon since I don't really have that many bones in there. Um, and it looks, the stock looks pretty good enough. Um, so I'm just gonna, it's just to help make the bones super, super soft and like break down more, get all that collagen and stuff in. But yeah, so I'll just, only a tablespoon and then I'm gonna let it boil and then I'm gonna put it on low after it's done boiling for maybe like another like 10, um, 10 more hours. Um, and then I'm gonna take out the eggs after it starts boiling too, cause it would have been long enough at this point for those guys. Okay, it is now 2 p.m. on Thursday the, I don't know, I'll insert it right here somewhere. This is what the broth looks like, there's lots of chicken bit, the um, bone is soft, I just turned off um, the temperature, um, and now I'm going to put it in a mason jar, but yes, this is what it looks like, and I'll show it I guess, in a clear jar when, when this gets all cleaned up and stuff. Hi, sorry, I don't know the last time I recorded, um, but it's been a few days since I finished the stock. I keep them in these little jars. I want to hold the, the logo because I don't want you guys to see the logo. I don't want to get sued for any reason at all. But I keep them in these jars that my friend gave to me. Um, yeah, and so it's the stock. It just has like the, the liquid and the uh, meat stuff in there, and I give it to her every single um, every for every meal. I just mix it in there. I'm just going to show you the inside of it. So this is what it looks like on the inside. You can see like the separation of the, the stock and the meat bits floating around in there. And I just put it into her food every single day. And I also give it to the ferrets too. Um, so I'm about to put some in the ferret bowl as well. And they also eat it, which is great for protein and fat because they need that stuff. Okay. I guess I might include some clips of them eating the food. Um... We'll see. Okay. Okay, so the liquid's in there. I'm sorry, she fell. I know. Um, liquid's in there. I poured it in. She normally doesn't eat her food because she's so picky. So I put the broth in there and now she does. So I'll go away so she can eat. So she can stop being so shy about it. Sorry. Go on. You can eat. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. I'm not looking at you. It's okay. Hey, okay, Alex. We got him. Okay. So the real challenge is going to be getting these guys to eat on camera because they're kind of just like free fed and they just kind of eat whenever they want to. So I'll have the camera pan towards the food, and if I happen to capture it, then like I guess we'll just be lucky. And if I don't, then I guess I don't. Here's a treat for being on video. Will you eat your food? I'll put a treat in there and see. At least it'll go over towards the food. Hi, puppy. Hi, puppy. Will you eat your food, honey? No? That's okay. Well, I tried. Alright, bye guys. Thanks for watching the video. Um, please subscribe if you like. I make videos randomly and non-consistently and whenever I feel like them. So if you want that inconsistency in your life, please subscribe to my channel. Um, in the meantime, have a nice day. Goodbye. Thank you too.